good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my brother and sister of this world. Today, I'm going to be bringing you a message, and the title of this message is, Repent Now and Not Tomorrow. Repent Now and Not Tomorrow. Hallelujah. And the first scripture reading is going to be coming from the book of Acts chapter 3, verses 19. Acts 3, verse 19. And I read, Repent ye therefore, and be convicted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the law. So the law is telling you for your sins to be blotted out and for you to appear or present yourself in the presence of God, for God to anoint you or bless you, deserves you got to repent. Before, sometime before you even cry to God or give your, your supplication or your prayer request to God, you have to repent of your sin. Because we sin against God so, in so many ways. So many ways. Our imagination, our thought, our, just for our look alone, our, you know, talking. We sin against God so many ways. Our imagination, things that we imagine. So before you call the Almighty God and ask Him, or you want to give Him your supplication, you have to repent. Say, God, forgive me. I sin against you by my thought, my words, and my imagination. Hallelujah. So, the topic today repent now and not tomorrow. Some people, you have the opportunity right now to repent and ask the Lord to forgive you. If tomorrow may be too late. Yeah, I've seen so many stories. You may not have the time to say, God, please forgive me. Oh, Lord, I repent of my sin, please. You may not have the time. So you have to do it right now. Repent right now. All the stuff that you're doing. If I want to go on and continue to listen out, <laughs> it, 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 it can't end right now. So many things. There are some people today engaged into going to the voodoo. And some people, they are playing games around, committing adultery, fornication, drinking, smoking. That's why I just said, if I continue to go on the list, we're not finished today. So you know what you're doing right there. And you know it's not right. Your heart is not right. You have the disease. Repent now and not tomorrow. Tomorrow, it may be too late. The kingdom of heaven is now. Repent now. The Lord is willing to accept your request or your, your petition or your, your, your repentance. He is willing to accept it right now. Tomorrow, you may not have the chance to do that. You could be fall into, you know, accidentally, you could be, be fall into the accident. And then you may be killed. And you don't have the time to ask God for repentance. So, repent now and not tomorrow. Hallelujah. And the second scripture reading is going to be coming from the book of Matthew 4.17. Matthew 4.17. And I read, From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the king of hell is at hand. 
So Jesus Christ went around telling the people. He was not preaching to them, no telling them, oh yeah, oh you're gonna receive this stuff there, yeah. you go, oh you're gonna receive a lot of money tomorrow. You know, prosperity messages. No. The message that Jesus Christ came on the air that he was preaching is for people like to be saved. To turn away from that their wicked ways. Repentance. Salvation. That was his message on this earth. So, my brother and sister, I'm telling you, the, the, the preaching that Jesus Christ did all along was telling the people to repent of the sin. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Tomorrow, it may be too late. You have the chance right now to repent of your sin. And you got to do it right now. Tomorrow, you may not have the chance or the opportunity or the upper hand of, of repenting. You got to do it now and not tomorrow. There are some people today that in the church, sometimes they try to limit God with their limitation. You don't do that. God is not limited towards your limitation. Don't limit God. He created this entire universe and everything that dwells in it. The devil and everything that dwells in it. God created everything. Every living being. God. How can you limit God? When you give God your supplication, your, your request, then you limit Him. You think that He will not answer you. So you turn around and go to the voodoo list. You're limiting God right there. Just give it to Him and leave it with Him. He will answer you. The appropriate time, the best time, and when He answers you or whatever He gives to you, it's going to be forever. But what I want to warn you right now, if you go to the devil, whatever the devil gave you is temporary. And he's going to get something for you. He either going to take something from your body, or he's going to tell you to sacrifice your mom, or he's going to tell you to sacrifice your dad, or he's going to tell you to sacrifice your daughter, or he's going to tell you to sacrifice something, or your human part, he's going to tell you to sacrifice some of something. He will never give you nothing free. But Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nissan. Hallelujah. He has so many names. He will never charge you nothing. And when he work it, he work the appropriate time. His time, according to Isaiah 55, verses 8, our thought and our ways is not like God's ways. His thought is high above this, this, this land that we live. So, just leave it with God. He will answer you. Do not limit God with your limitation, your thinking lim limitation. God will answer you. Just give it to Him. He will answer you. There are many Christians today. We call them the, how do call them? The, uh, the World Watch Christian. They fought in God's house and they fought in the devil's house. They think that God cannot see what they are doing. You're playing around. So-called Christians. I want to tell you right now. That's why God gave me the message to tell, tell me to tell you. Desist. Repent of your sin now and not tomorrow. You have the opportunity right now. You have the chance right now. Do it now, not tomorrow. The Lord gave me the message to warn you. Whatever you're doing, that man cannot see what you're doing. But God who sees everything revealed this to me to warn you to descend. Repent of your sin right now. You may not have the opportunity to repent tomorrow. So do it now. Change now. Now. I'm going to go on the, with this story because there is my testimony. That's how I came to Jesus Christ. The pastor just put his finger at the back to the Holy Spirit and said, You there, if you don't start smoking weed, you will die and go to hell. I, will ask, I said, who, who told the man that I can smoke weed? Who told him? At that time, 
I was living in a uh, the, uh, the worldly life. I told my fiance, I said, today, it's a tournament between me and you. And we were right in front of the crying cinema. We started arguing. I said, why you have to go and tell the pastor that I can smoke weed? Why you have to tell him? So just that time, looked at the pastor was going home, and he just stopped by. He said, no. She was not the one that told me. But it was the Holy Spirit that directed me to point my finger at the back. I will not point it to you. But your conscience maybe defeated you. I would just put my finger at the back and say, you that you don't start smoking opium, you, if you die, you're going to go straight to hell. Then right away, I, I go car. And from that day, I stopped. Immediately, I repented of my sin that very day. And I never went back to do it again no more. Because that's why the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 1 says, Shall we continue to live in sin that grace may abound? When some people commit a lot of sin, they say, God, please forgive, please forgive me. Lord, you are, please, you know right now we honor the pure of grace. That grace, you left grace with us. Grace will not be around if you don't repent now. Tomorrow it may be too late. Grace may, be, may not be around. So you have the opportunity right now with the Holy Spirit. Repent now. Tomorrow you may not see grace. Shall we continue to live in sin? Romans 6 verse 1. That grace may abound. No, you may not have grace tomorrow. Do it now. And stop playing that do -si do You committed a sin today. Then you ask God to forgive you. Then tomorrow you go, you, then you, you turn around and repeat them what you did the last time. Then you ask you again to forgive you. Then you continue to do it. No, that where Romans 6 verse 1 took place. Shall we continue to live in sin that grace may abide? You may not find grace tomorrow. You have the opportunity right now to repent of your sin. Ask God. Say, God, please forgive me and do not make me to go back and do it again. Let the Holy Spirit continue to be with me. God me all the days of my life. And the Lord is going to hear you. Repent now and not tomorrow. Tomorrow it may be too late. Hallelujah. And let's go to the, the next scripture. The next scripture is going to be coming from the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. 2 Peter 3, 9. <clears throat> verse 9, and I read. The law is not slack concerning his promise. As some men come slackness, but is long suffering. So to, to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to re, in the repentance. The law is that you know what some the people have they are docited around, say the law is slow. He, 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 he is not a fast mover. You see, when the people go to the devil, when they ask the devil for something, and the devil going to ask and say, oh, you got to kill your mom, you got to kill your father, or you got to kill your daughter, or you kill your son, or you got to sacrifice something, certain part of your body to me. When the devil works now, then they think that the devil is faster than God. God, time is not man time. When God do his, his is forever. But when the devil do anything, he's going to take part from you. He's going to take all, but his own is temporary. It's going to fail because it have, you know, uh, option. It have, you know, rules and, and, and dialogue. And have, the devil, when the devil gives you something, <laughs> he have option. He have, he have rules and regulation. If you don't do this, it's it going to fail. If you don't do that, or oh, you're going to lose uh, your, 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 your the, the, whatever I give to you. But when the Lord gave you something, no scream attached to it. Nothing attached to it. 
When he gave it to you, he gave it to you. Because you, you, you asked for it. But when the devil gets something to you, he's going to take from you. Something that you're going to sit down in your, your normal life that you're supposed to do. That is what you're going to do. Sacrifice your mother, sacrifice your child, sacrifice sometimes. People go and sacrifice their wife, sacrifice their children, sacrifice sometimes their manhood, whatever part of their body they're going to sacrifice it to the devil. The Lord said, I'm going to tell you right now. You right there, you in the church, and you 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 engage into such attitude, such you know immoral and you know, behavior. Then on Sunday you put your hands on, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Stop playing the right thing. God going to answer you. You are a fake Christian. You serving the devil, or you got chum or voodoo from the devil. And you want to try to fake it that God is the one that gave it to you. No, don't fake. You bypass God, you went to the, 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 the devil. For the devil to give you charm. For you for your business to flourish. For you to have that job. Or for you to have that woman. Or that man. Or for you to have a child. Oh. You think God don't know? God revealed to me to tell me to tell you, desert, repent now and not tomorrow. You may not have the chance tomorrow to repent. Wherever you are, listen to what the Lord has put in my mind to tell you or in my mouth to tell you. Repent. Now, not tomorrow. You may not have the chance tomorrow to repent. So today, right now, as you are listening to me, wherever you are, desist, repent now and not tomorrow. You may not have the chance to do it tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the law is not, he does not have that slackness or slow that he will not be able to answer you. But right now, all the stuff that you're doing, the law is, you know, he he he, he just petting you. You know, waiting for you to repent. Because he don't want you to perish. So I'm warning you, repent now and not tomorrow. That is the law. He warned you to repent. Not that he can strike on you right now to get rid of you. But he loves you. He wants you to repent. Turn away from that uncle or immoral ways. Turn away from that. Your conscience, you know that your conscience is not setting you right. You do not feel right. So the Lord said, today is the opportunity for you, for you to repent. Tomorrow, you may not have that chance. You may not have the chance tomorrow. You doing? I said it, and I'm gonna say it again. If I go on to lift all the immoral stuff that people are doing, we will not live from here today. We will not live from here. Hallelujah. Then that is where James chapter four, verse seventeen, take place. Shall we continue to live in sin? Shall we continue to do evil stuff? Because the Bible says from James 4, 17, if you know to do good and you don't do it, you sin. There are so many so-called Christians around the world today. Some of them, they are, they, God bless them. They have the opportunity. They call themselves, they say they are rich. Well, let me ask you the question. Where is your organization that you have that are helping all the poor people around the world? Where is the organization that you have? You say you are Mr. Rich Man. You are the richest man. 
What is the organization that you have around the world today that you have hospital built around the world or hospital built in your country all over that you helping the poor people, no fees for them to go to the hospital. And you feed them, you clothe them, you shelter them. Where? Oh, Mr. Rich Man, listen to me. You have the opportunity right now to do that. If you can't do it, I tell you, you are in trouble because the Bible tells me say it will be easy for the camel to go through a needle hole than for the rich man to enter into the in the kingdom of heaven. So all that your riches there, you forget the story about Lazarus and the, and the rich king. You forget the story. Oh, you want me to repeat? Yeah, both of them die. But the poor man, the baker, was fall in heaven. And the rich man was fall in hell. And he was baking Lazarus, who was the poor man, to go and warn his brother and sister there to desist and turn away from the ugly way so they should not come to where he is in hell. So Abraham told him, he said, no, and Lazarus cannot go there. They have other pastor there or preacher there or prophet there. They have Abraham there. I mean, they have um, Elijah. They have Moses there. They're going to preach to them. Or they have some pastors around or God fearing pastors there who preach the gospel, the real gospel, tell people about, about their sin, tell people about salvation. They have them there. They will, they will warn them. They will warn your family. But Lazarus, the poor man, he, he's, 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 in, he's in heaven. He can yeah, he can communicate with you, but he can't go back there. And he started crying. So I want to warn you right now, Mr. Rich Man. Oh, you're so successful. But are you helping the poor people? If you don't want to go around the world, but right in your country, let your knee be like a sum all over you. Yeah, my Mr. John, Mr. John, oh, everywhere he built hospital for the poor people. He built shelter for them. They feed them, they clothe them, they take care of them, they do everything for them. Do you do that? Mr. Rich Man, repent of your sin right now. Now and not tomorrow. My brother and sister today, you know, sometimes when you preach the, or the, the message of salvation or message to make people to turn away from the sin or for people to live the real life, sometimes people do not want to let, listen to the message. <laughs> <laughs> but that is not how I got saved. I got saved, but they tell me about my wrongdoing, and I, I repented, and I got saved. But let me tell you today, if you don't listen to that message, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. But those who fear God, listen to the message and apply it in your life. Repent now and not tomorrow. You may not have the chance tomorrow to repent. You may not have the chance. Then there are some so-called ministers, pastors, and we call ourselves men of God, M-O-G. They went to the honor war, went to the devil kingdom, asked the devil to give them certain charm. And the charm, the charm of for them to perform miracles, you know, healing. But let me let me let you know right now. If you call yourself a so-called MOG, a man of God, a pastor, a prophet. And you doing that, you engage into that immoral act, you, be, you can hide it from the congregation or hide it from your members, but you can't hide that from God. 
But I got good news for you. The Lord said, I'm going to tell you that. Repent now and not tomorrow. Because on that day, the day on that day, that day, everybody going to stay on love. It's from the Almighty God. And Jesus Christ is going to be the judge. He's going to tell you, say, I know you're not going to my life and son. Oh, then you're going to get a pastor and try to, you know, you know, plead the, the case. Oh, I perform a lot of miracles in your name. I heal a lot of people in your name. Then Jesus Christ is going to stand up again and say, You good and for, and for nothing, man of God. You are doing all that thing in a voodoo name, in the devil name, but not in my name. I did not give you the power. That anointing, I did not give it to you. The Holy Spirit, I did not give it to you. But instead, you went to the devil, and the devil gave you a chance for you to perform that healing, that miracle. It was not from me. Get away, go my life and start straight in hell. Men of God, wherever you are, the Lord said, I'm going to tell you to repent now and not tomorrow. But I tell you, if you want, if you do not listen to the message and you won't try to retaliate in some kind of a way, I tell you, anyone who tried to come against me about the message I God gave me to preach, you're going to find whatever plane you come with, that same plane is going to go right back to you. If you plan to kill me, you will die. If you plan to do any harm to me, that harm is going to go right back to you. Glory be to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory be to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He's the one that gave me the utterance. With all him, I am able to even talk. The only time I, I had the time to talk, when I am giving the word of God, but normally, Anyone who know me, I ain't able to talk for long. I ain't ever. So let's to me right now. Do not fake your miracle. It's not from God. It's from the devil. You so-called men of God around the world today, instead of you preaching salvation to people, telling the people to repent of the sin, you're not doing it. Some of the messenger is just about prosperity for the people to give a lot of money, and you take the people's money, and you buy cars, planes, a lot of planes, a lot of cars, and blood for the cars. While the poor people who pay the fight and the offering are struggling, suffering. And you that enjoy. Is that right? I thought you sort of have the poor people. You sort of have the blind people open a shelter for them. The crippled people open a shelter for them. The homeless open a shelter for them. Oh, Jesus Christ. So, come men of God around the world. Listen to me. The Lord said, I'm going to tell you right now. Repent of your sin right now. Make a transformation to the Holy Spirit and do the will of God. Jesus Christ came on this earth. He went around doing good. That's all he did. Doing good. Helping the people, preaching to them about their, their life, their, 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 their salvation life. Preaching the day about repentance. You there preaching for your church to, to be a mega church. Oh yeah, mega church. So all the time the offering that the people sow. How many if they, if you have 52 state or 50 state in your country? Have you saw in every state open a big you know? Orphanage home to help the poor people. Have you? Men, I'm speaking to the men of God around the world. They call themselves successful men of God. They, they're rich. Have you? Have you went around your, 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 in your country, you know, every part of your country, every county or, 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 or state? In your country, sowing, bear homes 
for the for for the homeless. Bear homes for people who do not have food to eat. That the surplus of food. Have you have you provided for them? Have you? Then there are some people in the family who they, they all they do is to stir up fire in the family. That's all they do. Stir up. They, they go around and the stir up fire is gossiping. Gossiping. And when they gossip all along, and that other family member gonna keep an amusity against that other family member, and that other family member there gonna keep an amusity against that other family member, and so on and so on. Gossip, heaven is not for you. Heaven is not for you. Now go to James. No, now go to Romans 16, verse 28. Romans 16, verse 28 first. Then we'll go to James 1, verse 26 and 27. Romans 16, verse 28. I'm sorry for that. That would be Proverbs. Sorry for that. Proverbs 16 28. Not Romans. Proverbs 16 28. Proverbs 16, 28. About people who got it. Let me tell you what God said to do. Proverbs 16, 28. A fellow man so strive, and a whisperer separate chief friends. Let me read it one more time. A fellow man so strive, and a whisperer separate chief friends. A whisperer are people who gossip. Two, two, two. They're gonna say they're gonna come to the other person, the other family member, and spread in the two, two, two. Go to the other person and spread two, two, two. So then they're called for long distance. They're called for long distance and get started in the saying lala, whisp in the start whispering with a lot of terrible things there in the other person's mind, and the other person gonna get it and go and go tell the other person and create. The other, the other interpretation say they create, they are destroyer. Anytime you see family members, they cannot see eye, they can't, you know, see eye to eye. There are somebody in the family there who is a gossiper that stayed there to gossip. Men, women, they jump together. And the other part of the Bible tells me say, they are called basic bodies. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, glory be to you. Best of body, they just, when I talk to you one or two times, I saw you see me, they say, Baba, then I say, I don't want to engage you to that. <laughs> Hallelujah. I used to go, pick up the phone, and call, I, used to call, I call people randomly, the family member there. 
call it. I don't want to. When I call it, they don't pick up the phone and leave a message. Sometimes they don't return my call. So it came to the time that in America, setting job will give you the opportunity, and setting job will not give you the opportunity. Hallelujah. So setting job do not give me the opportunity to start calling there again. Oh man, the best of buddy then is trying to castigate and say all kind of negative stuff about me. But I forget it, you know, to tell them. You all don't know? It is written. Touch down my and not and do my prophet no harm. You don't know who to put your mouth on. <laughs> sometimes, there's sometimes when something happened to you or you find yourself in a calamity, then people are going to sit on the side and start casting it and say, well, he called himself a man of God. Why? He can see, he can do the what that happened to him. There is nothing that happened on the song with all God approval. It may be whatever the devil tried to do. No, when God do not approve it, it will not happen. God did it. God signed a long time ago for it to happen that way. For certain lessons to be in the land. Or for what happened for people to learn from that. Oh, my people. You have to repent now from your gossiping. If you don't do it, what are you? Are, you some of the mean gossipers there are men. Some people think are women. No! Men! Then, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 and 10. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. And I read. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. I read. No ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You ever know? The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God of heaven. They will not. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. They will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. They will not. Because they are unrighteous. Sometimes they act like they go to church, but they don't do God will. Not all we say, Lord, Lord, we enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of God, that is the person who is called a child of God. People who want to cause confusion, especially in the family, you call yourself a child of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicator, none adulterer, or none adulterer. The first one was adulterers, people who go to the voodoo list, they believe in the, the, the tree, adulterers. And adulterers, people, you know, people who do all such a thing, you know, some, 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 some of the, the meaning, they follow beyond people, women, or they do all kind of stuff there, and, you know, they commit all kind of a terrible sin, adulterers, none effeminate, none abuse of themselves with mankind. That is homosexual right there. Abuse of the self with mankind. Man and man sleep with one another. Woman and woman sleep with one another. That is the King James translation, you know, in the, trans in the translation right there. But if you go to any symbol, you're going to hear homosexualists. You people think that I'm going to stop preaching and, or I'm going to stop on the topic of no homosexual. I will not stop. Because every time they're going to repeat until you can repent now and not tomorrow. 
and say, when you repent now and not tomorrow, I say I'm going to preach it for the other people to repent and not tomorrow. Why? The beautiful women around the world, God made woman for man. Man for woman. And you're going to leave your beautiful women and go and sleep with your friend, men will all be, be around him, go with all the... Uh, what, are you blind? Or you don't have no feelings? Let me ask you today, you man, you homosexualist man, what, you don't have no feelings? God created a woman for you. And you sleeping, you're going to go sleep without sin, muscle man? And you woman, let me tell you, God made you for man. And you laying down with your friend woman, go and go buy toys from the store. Or the, or the other store I got, they later went to the, the adulterous store and buy toys so she can use it. She put the toys around her waist and the toys, it looked like she, she, she kept the toys there all the time trying to act like a man. And that toys there, she went on the operation, her kidney. Oh, man. You're not man. God made man for a woman. A woman for a man. Not woman to woman. Not man to man. You all think I'm going to stop preaching this? No. You can repent now or tomorrow. You can repent now or not. I still going to come and preach it. As the Holy Spirit lead, I'm preaching. Verse 10. I, I read 9, I'm on 10. No thieves. Oh, some people, women, men, especially the terrible one for you to see women stealing. No thieves. No covetous person. We are friend get there, you, you want most of the people that are in California, they kind of laugh. They, that kind of a, you know, they, you know they, they think that it's a competition. Comfortlessness. Your friend get there, then you covet. You want to get it. It's a sin. Non drunker. As long as you put alcohol in your mouth, you are a drunker. Because you will not be normal. As long as I go get you, you will not be normal. Oh, I said, as long as alcohol get in you, you will not be normal. The Lord seven day to repent of that now and not tomorrow. You may not have the chance. None. Re re revelers. Revelers are people who are some people or someone who speak abusively, rude. They are talk ruling. Revelers. They are rude. Then the on Sunday you see them. Holy, holy. Oh Jesus, 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 never fear me. Hallelujah. Then you see they sink into my independence of worship. They are revelers. They are abusive. Rude. Then when they go to church, then they pretend. And I continue. Non extortional. Extortional are people who obtain or they want to get the everything they want to get by force. Or if they can get it by force, they threaten you. Extortional. They want to get it by force, by all means. There are people in the family, friends, or people around the world that, that have their attitude. So it's, they call themselves Christian. Extortional. They, they will threaten you. They want to get something by, from you by force. That's what the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 10 is saying right now. And the last statement shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Drunk or not, you will not go to heaven. You, 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 you want to continue doing that? Go ahead. You have the chance today, right now, to repent. 
Live that life. Then you want to talk to somebody about Jesus? You want to pretend? You don't want to talk about Jesus 51? Are you kidding me? That is no excuse right there. It was an occasion. Drunkard, you go, you drink beer. According to the book of Lamentation, in the Lamentation, and not Le yeah, Le Leviticus. Beer? Hell, you're going to enter hell. All these things then, you people are doing all around the world. Yeah, we all did that. According to the book of Titus chapter 3, verse 3, we all did that. But this time around, the law has, you know, converted or changed people's mind from the repentance they are changed. And you want to be living and left and going to church and you can't make a change? Then you want to sit on the, sometimes some soccer men of God, when they commit such a sin, then there are people who don't drink more than fish, drinking water, then they won't try to correct or rebuke the pastor who was caught. In her wrong doing. Why are they doing that? <laughs> oh, glory be to Jesus Christ. You doing that. The plank is in your eye. Then you want to tell another man that, oh, he has the speck in his eyes? You are joking. You should not do it at all. Your life should be an all right life. Then you can correct. Second Timothy 3.16. Then you can rebuke. You can instruct and you can teach. You can live in a good life. But you can be like a fish drinking water that you won't try to rebuke or put your mouth on somebody who was caught in the wrongdoing. You are a hypocrite. The Lord says to tell you that you are a hypocrite. There are some in the day in the church and in the family. A friends, hypocrite. You're doing it, but then you won't try to put your mouth on someone. Stop playing around. When you live a good life and not doing the on 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 the, that's a, the immoral stuff, then when you want to try to rebuke somebody, at least you okay. And let me tell you today right now, you can't go ahead and start rebuking somebody who is not or, or religious or or, or or believer. It's not right. You can only rebuke somebody who is found as a Christian, who is found in the church. You can rebuke him because you don't want him to, to go into sin. But somebody who do not know, about, they don't care about God, you're going to be wasting your time. You can only preach to that person and try for that person, ask God for that person left to be in the confession. But now try to start rebuking them in that kind of way. No, no. You can rebuke your church member, your member, your Christian member, your believers. My people, I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says all these things there, thieves, comforters, guys, drunkard, revivers, revelers, and extortioners, they will not inherit the kingdom of hell. They will not. They will not inherit the kingdom of hell. People who fall in, in the committing in the, in the homosexualism, you will not enter heaven. I want the Bible say that. You will not. You can't enter heaven. You have the chance right now as the Holy Spirit leave me to tell you, to go warn me, to warn you, to tell you, repent now and not tomorrow. You may not have the chance to repent. You may not. And let us go on to Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. Verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not 
shutting that it cannot save, neither his ears heavy that it cannot hear. The Lord here is not shut that he cannot save us. Not his ear heavy that he cannot hear us. But you know what? Let me read verse 2. But your iniquity has separated you between you and your God. And your sin has had his face from you that he would not hear you. Hallelujah. Our sin is the one that separates us from God. So you have the opportunity today, right now, to repent of your sin and not tomorrow. It may be too late. Repent. Whatever you're doing, I may not see it or I may not measure it. But you got to turn away from it. You know your conscience is telling you what you are doing is not right. Or they gave you something for you and your family to share. You try to take it all to yourself. Oh, the loss I'm going to tell you is terrible. You are trying to suppress some people. They gave you and your brother something, money. You try to take it all for yourself and try to kill your brother. Oh, the loss I'm going to tell you, you have to repent right now and not tomorrow. It will be too late. May God bless every one of us. May this message go deep down in our hearts for Christ's sake. And I'll come back again at the Holy Spirit lead. Bye.